Hello there and welcome to the Heat Army podcast live. This is uh, Gateshead versus Dagenham and Redbridge and we're also on National League TV as well and uh, it is going to be a fantastic game here of course. A lot to play for. Gateshead looking to cement themselves in the playoffs as they have been doing for the last few months and of course Dagenham and Redbridge. If they start to win games now they can make a late push for the playoffs come the end of the season. My name is David Gallis. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm flying solo tonight. I haven't got Mark Curvers here with me, unfortunately. But uh, we will be bringing you uh, the game nonetheless. I do have the team sheet here in front of me. There is some changes to the Gated lineup, though the game that team Gated progressed to the semi-finals of the FA Trophy on Saturday. Of course, with that uh, 3-2 win over Peterborough Sports, where... The man of the moment, Dijon Brown, scored a hat-trick and he is in the starting lineup. I will go through that uh, very soon. A little bit of housekeeping on the Heat Army podcast side of things. A big thank you to everyone that joined us live last night. It was an absolute pleasure to have you with us. And uh, we will be back next week talking about uh, the uh, sorry, Ebbs Fleet United game. And of course, uh, previewing the game after that. So please do get involved with us. Uh, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, please do uh, like and subscribe, hit the bell, and when we go live or publish one of our vlogs, you will be able to see it there and then, and that would be absolutely fantastic. But looking forward to this game, Dagenham and Redbridge, the reverse fixture, Gated won 4-2 down at Dagenham and Gated. Well, they were in cruise control for a little bit, but they made life hard for themselves and gifted Dagenham a goal. And Gateshead will not be wanting to have a repeat performance of that here this, uh, this evening at Gateshead International Stadium. Uh, right, I'll go through the visiting team. Uh, Elliot Josham is the um, captain. It's Nick Tavares is uh, number four. Jake Hessen tyler Josh Reese, Ryan Hill, Don uh, Dion Pereira, Lewis Page, Harry Phipps, Sam Ling, Keenan apaya Forson and David Long King. On the bench is Josh Hare, Silo uh, Remy, um, Har uh, Harvey Cardwell, Daniel uh, Nukamara, and Connor Lawless. And Gate said they do have a change line up to Saturday. James Montgomery does stay in goal. Kenton Richardson plays. Louis Story returns to the starting lineup with Mamadou Job. Luke Hannon to Anne Kane Adam return, as does Captain Ed Francis, uh, has, has the armband at the moment. Callum Whelan, Regan Booty, Marcus Denanga, and Dejon Brown. So it looks like Gator are playing two up front with two strikers that are in absolute hot form at the moment. And we'll just bring up this uh, the league table uh, on our YouTube stream. Of course, Gator sitting in seventh there, and they could uh, go as high as six if results go our way. And of course, Altrinum, who are behind us uh, in eighth, ninth place, uh, are at home to struggling York City. So that could be uh, a, a one to look out for in the fixtures. We will keep you updated on that as the evening progresses. But of course, FC Halifax, who are in eighth place, their game has been postponed this evening. Uh, so uh, we don't have to worry about their fixture. But as long as Gator concentrate on their own, the other fixtures will look after themselves. We'll put the league table up later on. But uh, if you would like to send us a message here on the Heat Army podcast, or if you're watching on National League TV, you can hop onto YouTube and send us a message. Let us know where you're watching or listening from in the world. We'd love to hear from you and uh, let us know exactly what you're doing tonight while listening to Gated versus Dagenham and Redbridge here at Gated Stadium. Uh, just as you can see, we have the camera on on uh, YouTube, so you can see the stand filling up here nicely. Um, but do we do want more people to come to the home games and please do check out Gated FC's social media and you will see when the games are advertised and when tickets go on pre-sale and if you would like to be here this is the best place to see it and you might even see a man in a blue coat screaming to a microphone and see the how high pitched i can get in person so please do that and um, we have uh, the walden women are listening in from home i have seen darren walden already here uh you might be able to spot him over my shoulder uh, uh in the in the coming moments if he's in the stand already so if you'd like to do as liv has done you can send us a message, but also have a cheeky subscribe because that is what we'd love here as well. And while we're on, we'll just be, uh, put a banner up uh, to say a big thank you to our sponsors and partners, uh, Northern Print Solutions and Patrick Sportswear, uh, who have been with us this season. And of course, there you go. There is Regan Booty, who is playing tonight. Hit that subscribe button and make Regan happy. Uh, so, yes, all there. All that stuff's done. 
Uh, also, as well, uh, we want to say if you uh, haven't been on the Heat Army podcast, we have things like the Prediction League here. There you go. Uh, it's all uh, competitive, all a little bit of fun. So if you'd like to come along, join into that, you certainly can. But we do have a video uh, and audio to play out here um, for an interview with Rob Elliott that was done by KZFC TV. And this was his thought going into the season's game. Rob, first things first before we, we get on to the, the league matters Tuesday, obviously a, a win on, on Saturday. I mean, you, you reflected after after that that the performance maybe wasn't exactly what you're hoping for, but through the semi-final and then, of course, the draw today, giving you a, a home draw as well, which I suppose is, is all you can ask for, really. Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, the best we could ask for. Uh, obviously, no matter who you get, it's going to be a tough game. Um, I think, uh, obviously, Macclesfield is a huge, huge club. I remember playing against them in the league when I was uh, at Quinton. Um and obviously they're sort of under a massive revival and the, the, and the squad they've got doesn't reflect the level they're at at all, along with the size of the you know the fan base and the budget and everything. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a big day. Uh, it's going to be a really tough game, um, but yeah, something to look forward to. And ultimately, on reflection, yes, I thought we could have played better, but we're in the hat and we're in the semi-finals. And when you're in a cup competition, that's the most important thing. So we had that winning mentality, but. It's good. Peterborough stressed, stressed us in different ways, and um, ultimately we come through it. And yeah, can look forward to a semi-final draw, but that has to go to the back of our mind for the next uh, four weeks or so because there's a lot of games between now and then. Yeah, and like you say, a lot of, of league games to, to come still before then, and, and first of that with Dagenham here at the, the stadium tomorrow. Obviously, you, you caught a little bit of, of their game with with Southend at the weekend, with it being the late kickoff on on TNT. They've been doing fairly well recently, obviously got a, a fair few players who competed around kind of playoffs, top end of the league, that type of stuff in recent years, so definitely not a, well, I mean, no game's an easy game, but definitely not an easy one tomorrow. No, no, definitely not. I think our running towards the end of the season is going to be really tough, especially towards the business end, and yeah, like you rightly said, Dagenham have been excellent recently. They made some really good signings. Um, they're very, very well organised. They're good at, um, they're very good in their low block when they go into it, but they're also very good when they decide to press. So, you know, it's two sort of situations we're going to have to try and make sure we're ready for in terms of the play out and in terms of breaking them down. But obviously on the flip side, they're scoring goals, they're, flea, they're playing good free-flowing football. Um, and yeah, so it's going to be a really tough game for us. So we need to make sure you know, that we have lots of energy, we're ready for it and uh, um, we're back on, back on our metal and, and ready to go because I think no, between now and the end of the season, there's not going to be any easy games. Um, and I think Dagenham, with the form they're in, uh, especially after going to South End, uh, it's going to be tough for us. Yeah, and, and off the, the back of Saturday, obviously, you give you a, an opportunity to, to sort of rotate some of the squad around a bit. I mean, people like Ed and, and Wheelow and Marcus have pretty much been playing two games a week for the past month or so. And obviously, good to see Tinks and, and Tommy back on the, the pitch as well. Yeah, definitely. I think we're. Uh, no, it wasn't just because it was Peterborough, it's because we need to rest players. Um, we need to keep the squad fresh. As we're getting more numbers back, then we need to be able to be sensible in terms of how we rotate players, how we use the squad, how we use the team. I think there's a period coming up after um, Ever Street where there's, I think it's four games in nine days or eight days. Um, so yeah, pretty much going to have to rest and rotate everyone um, because of the extra, because of the cup run. And even with the substitutions, you know, we had to bring Kenton off because he's just come back from hamstring injury played nearly every minute since then and you know he's sort of redlining and high risk so you know didn't always make tactical substitutions because of the way the game was going but more protecting the players um, but again that's part of you know it's part and parcel of football and we've got the result the lads who played come on come off whatever it was all added to it and it was um, yeah I think it's a, a mantle we're going to have to take on and the squad we're going to have to take on in the fact that you know you might be disappointed one week but the next game you won't be and it's going to be a push from everyone now and, and complete buy-in to get us to the end of the season and try and keep this this momentum and run going because, like we talked about in in hindsight and reflection, it's been a an incredible eighteen months from from everyone involved and we just need to keep pushing forward. And on the the squad front, in in terms of the whole picture on that, how is everyone looking off the back of Saturday? Yeah, everyone's looking good. Um, Stotty had an issue with his foot, but we think it's a previous injury um, that he might have broken his foot previously. Um, so we're just getting that checked out and obviously we, yeah, Tinks, um, Tommy, Greg just around the corner so hopefully no other issues. Um, we'll have to assess Joe Grayson as the week, as the, as the game comes tomorrow and the week goes on but other than that not too many worries, um, just making sure we manage the squad and the rotation um, 
and the minutes really to make sure as fresh as we can be and that we're attacking every game um, in the best way possible. Well, that was Rob Elliott talking to Jack McGregor, Gated FC press officer, uh, before this game. Yeah, and that was his thoughts and views. We've got lots of messages coming in and lots of people tuning in. Thank you very much for joining us. Paula Evans, of course, of the Evans family down there in South Wales, they're tuning in. So thank you for sending your message. We also got uh, Panny will be back and bigger and better. Of course, he's uh, not involved in today's squad. My laptop back tomorrow, so we'll to update. Found old friendly from 1963 away at the Berwick Rangers. We won 2-1. Of course, Stephanie there keeping up with all the stats. But I'll tell you what the team is now. James Montgomery starts in goal for Gateshead. Kent Richardson, Louis Story, Mamadou Job, Luke Hannant, Kane Adam, Ed Francis the captain, Callum Whelan, Regan Booty, Marcus Denanga and Dejon Brown start up top. Tinkler on the bench with um, Tom Allen, Ben Warman, Kieran Evans and Connor McBride. I'll go through the visitors again very, very shortly. But it is the beast and the bear starting up top. And what can they do? They're both hungry for goals. It's their kingdom. We just live in it. So we'll see what happens. And uh, we are moments away from the teams coming out here for kickoff at Gateshead International Stadium. And if you are just joining us and you didn't know, it's Gateshead versus Dagenham Redbridge, Vanarama National League action. And you won't miss a kick here with us on National League TV and on the Heed Army podcast. So we'd like to uh, say thank you for joining us. And if you are watching on Twitter, migrate over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button and help us uh, reach more people. And uh, as I say, we, uh, we put the camera on. We haven't had the camera on in a while. Uh, so we've got a bit of crowd reaction here. But Gated are coming back out onto the pitch, led out by Ed Francis with his armband on and the headband, of course. But Gated versus Dagenham here, National League action about to get underway. I'll go through the visitors lineup now. It's Elian Joshum in goal, who is captain. Nick Tavares, Jake Hessen-Tyler, Josh Reese, Re uh, Ryan Hill, Don Pereira, Lewis Page, Harry Phipps, Sam Ling, Ken Apaya, Forson, and David Lounge King. Make up the start and lineup on the bench. Josh Hare, Silo Remy, Harvey Cadwell, Daniel uh, uh, Nikumra, <laughs> get that right, Connor Lawless. And I'll go through that gate and say once more time, it's James Montgomery in goal, Kent Richardson, Louis Story, Mamadou Job, Luke Hannant, Kane Adam, Captain Ed Francis, Callum Whelan, Regan Booty, Marcus Denanga, and Dejon Brown. On the bench is Tinkler, Alan, Warman, Evans, and McBride. We are getting underway here at Gateshead International Stadium. It's all to play for. Gateshead in their white strips. And, of course, Dagenham Redbridge in their red and blue uh, shirt, white socks, white shorts. So we're all underway here. We're about to get underway here at Gateshead. And it is going to be very, very exciting. Gateshead looking to stay in the playoffs. Dagenham chasing the playoffs. What can happen? You'll find it out all here. We've got Graham Jones has put good luck tonight, sent in a message. We've got Alan Guest, he's put away the heat. We've got uh, another one there, isn't the last one? Uh, the Gannets are not, oh, not too sure. What, and we've got another one here, Davy Steele. Sorry, I'm not there. I'm on the Isle of May in the third for fourth. Come on, the heat. Well, there we go. There's the p first pin in the map this evening. We've got someone out there in the North Sea. And Cow Daly, all the way from Portugal, has given us some hearts in black and white. And we do hope that you enjoy this afternoon or this evening's uh, game. I'm going to turn the camera off now. I'll turn it back on a hot time because I think some people have actually moved seat. <laughs> they don't want to be on. So we'll stop the camera. There you go. And we're going to get into our action here. Both teams having a um, bit of a huddle at the moment, psyching each other up. And it does look as if uh, Gated are going to be shooting towards the River Tyne end and... Dagenham and Redbridge are going to be shooting towards the felon end. The tiny wheel stand is filling up nicely here. Hopefully a good crowd. And Gate said, well, they've got the beast and the bear up top. Can they feed tonight? We will find out. Gator fans in great voice behind us in the time and we are stand and we're underway as Ed Francis pings the ball out to the right hand side 
but too much on it. And out it goes for the first throwing of the game. And, uh, well, great atmosphere already. And just look across to my left there. A fair few uh, Dagon Redbridge fans have made the trip up. We'll find out how many later on when it's announced. But a great effort nonetheless. As Story pings the ball up to Denanga, who chests it over and headed down all the way back to the captain, Justin, in the Dagenham goal. For all audio listeners, he's all in green. Monty all in pink. It's not often you see the classic goalkeeper green strips these days. As Story wins the header and it will go out for a Dagenham throw. Of course, we normally have Mark Curvers with us in co commentary, unable to be here this evening. So it's just myself. Still hope the game is enjoyable for you. But Ling is going to be the player to take this throw. It's going to be a long one. He's drying it off on his shirt. And he launches it in to the area there. It's been headed clear. Can get to pick up the second ball. They can. Denanga's back to help out. Get the ball back to Richardson. Hannant back to Richardson and. Plays the ball up to Denanga, who's still sitting deep, controls the ball well, but he's under pressure from a couple of players and loses out. And Dagenham now try and build. But Denanga back to win the ball again. And Gate said, doing the dirty work at the moment in the early stages. Nice to see this big man get back to help. But at the moment, Gate said, looking to break. Ball across the far side. And Gate can bring it forward through Job. Out to Adam. Plays it all the way back to Story just to slow it down somewhat. Story across to Richardson. Back to Story. Three minutes gone. It's been a lively start. No chances created, but both teams trying to get an early foothold. Booty gets the ball back from Francis. He's ball into the middle. Just gets to Job. Job does very well, but gets dispossessed. And now Dagenham on the attack on the far side. It is Phipps with the ball. Goes for the shot. It's def deflected off a gated body, but it's still not away. And now on the far side of the box, Dagenham go for a shot. And, uh, well, he had targets in the middle, but his shot goes over the ball. And it is a goal kick to Gated. Three minutes gone. Well... Gated fans in jovial spirits after Saturday's 3-2 win against Peterborough Sports, which has seen Gated progress through to the FA Trophy semi-final for a second year in a row. Dare they dream of getting to the final again. Macclesfield was the team we've been drawn out against in the semi-final, but the ball forward now for Adam to chase onto. Does very well to get in front of his man. Hold the ball up, he's past him. He's into the box, pulls it across. Denango was waiting and it's been scooped behind for a corner. But Adam just not giving up there, tenacious and creating something out of nothing. Well, Ed Francis is the man that's going to take the corner on the far side. Well, we've got the corner yet to come in. Now the hand is aloft from Francis. The delivery comes in. Up in the air, Joe didn't get to it, headed clear, but Hannon's going to be the man that can pick it up, puts it back out to Francis on the right-hand side, tries to put it down the line, deflects out for a throw into Gated halfway inside the Gated, uh, the Dagenham half. And we've got uh, Neil Robinson discreetly listening in from the long room at Lord's Cricket Ground. Well, there you go. Well, that's a pin that we've never had in the map before, unless he hasn't told us he's been in there. Of course, we know he works down there. Big Gated fan, Neil. Ball to Denanga. Denanga seems to be playing that slightly deeper role somewhat today. He's dropping deep to get involved, but getting himself straight back up to the top line. As Gator build from the back with Richardson. Looks like a 3 4 3 Gator are playing at the moment. With Adam and Hannant being wingers and wing backs. As Hannant plays the ball back to Story on the halfway line. Across to Job. Job gets it to Kane Adam. Looks to move with the ball. Keeps the possession and lays it back to Story. Gateshead camped out inside the 
Dagenham half here. Every player in there bar Monty is Hannant. Gives it to Richardson again. Gates have settled into a passing style that we've seen for many a year now as ball put out from Brown out to Adam there to cross in and wasn't the greatest, but Whelan, like a terrier, trying to win it back and does enough to disrupt and Francis gets involved and now Whelan has the ball. Plays it inside to Brown. Brown out to Adam on the far side. Needs a delivery in. Dinks one in towards Brown, but headed away. But Gateshead pick up the loose ball. Build again through Francis. Right-hand side of the pitch goes for a long shot and uh, had to keep on worrying for a second. And it's a goal kick. Francis believes it took a deflection, but it is a goal kick nonetheless. Six minutes gone. If you all just joined us here at Gateshead International Stadium, it's Gated nil, Dagenham Redbridge nil. But Gated just had a little bit better of the possession. There is a Dagenham player down at the moment, holding his uh, his shin. Sat down in the penalty area, so a quick break in play. We'll have a quick look around the National League to see if there is any scores happening already. Ebb's Fleet are winning 1-0, uh, I believe. Uh, let's have a look. 1-0 away to Aldershot. That's a good result for Gated. Alderman winning 1-0 at home to York City. And another early goal in the National League is league leaders Chesterfield 1, Oxford City 0. And the rest of the games are nil nil at the moment around the National League. And um, just trying to see which player it is that's down receiving treatment. Um, he hasn't moved much. He's, he's sat up. He's not uh, knocked out or anything. But he's, uh, he's obviously in some discomfort. Physio is... Saying to him at the moment, moving his left knee, bending. So we'll see if he can carry on. Hopefully he can. As both sets of players <laughs> take a little opportunity to get up some water. Mild night, though, on Tain Ted compared to Saturday afternoon. It was absolutely brassic, as they say. Really, really cold. And we had a, a, a spell of rain as well to add into that. It was coming into the commentary area which doesn't often happen here at Gated Stadium. But the wind was blowing in that direction. And, well, the player is up. A little bit of a skip in his uh, walk there. I think it might be Jake Hessenthaler, actually. No, it isn't Hessenthaler. Um, I'll find out. But he's he's, uh, he's going through a little bit of movement there. And he seems to be all right. Just trotting off with the physio to our left-hand side. We wait the kick to be taken and... He is off the pitch now, and it's number four. It was uh, Nick T uh, Tavares. Goal kick taken, headed in by Phipps and cleared. Now, get to try and win the ball. It's going to be picked up by Dagenham, though, and ball played forward by Ling. It was not Phipps before, actually, that had the header. Uh, up the ball up and Story calmly nods it down there. Job can pick it up as Monty had come to the edge of his area and Gator get the ball moving quickly as Job brings the ball forward. He's trying to open up. Sorry, it's, it's Kane Adam. <laughs> Getting them confused. Ball in there. Oh, into the side net. And Gator started the better of the two sides so far here. And it's warming up nicely. Once again, if you are joining us on our audio streams, if you're on Twitter, please migrate across to YouTube and hit that subscribe button and interact with us there. Be lovely. As Ling heads the ball forward, Richardson manages to come away with the ball and give it to Story. Story goes for the crossfield ball to Kane Adam, and the ball's just going to skip away from him there. Just skimmed off his boot as he tried to turn. Throw into Dagenham and Redbridge just inside the gates at half on the far side. We await the throw to be taken into the 10th minute. Ball launched down that left-hand side, picked up in midfield and forward by Dagenham, trying to get it around. Hessen Taylor wins the ball back. And now to try and... Well, they've got a throw in on the far side and looks like Ling is going to go over there to take another long throw. So 
Certainly seems to be a weapon that they are trying to utilize. Committed a lot of men forward for this. It's Ling, a long throw right up towards the edge of the six yard box. Bukita can pick up the loose ball and ping the ball forward, looking for the run of Denanga. It's asking a lot of him. It's passed back to the keeper who has to kick it out. And Dagenham keep the ball moving, no, but. The passing just needs to be a little bit better for Dagenham's point of view. And Gated managed to keep the ball. Nice crossfield ball to Hannon to find him in space. Dagenham quickly back into shape and closing down. But Hannon cuts inside. Whelan gets it back to Hannon. That's lovely stuff. Sees Francis in space. Kane Adams in space on the far side. But plays it. Oh, through the through the referee's legs. Gated still in possession. Booty to Francis. Francis sees a lovely ball through to Adam on the far side. Takes it down. Pulls it back across. There's Whelan. And he's put it into the side netting. And it's a corner. Keeper must have got a hand to it. And Kate said, well, they're starting to find a lot of joy down the flanks. Quickly taken short the corner. Francis gives it to Booty. Back to Francis. He's on the... Oh, right, right hand side of the box and the ball inside wasn't the greatest but Richardson's there to quickly hoover the ball up and give it to Kane Adam inside Francis plays it to Whelan Booty crossfield ball to Hannon here he's in space and now he can carry the ball forward down this left hand side corner of the box looks for movement gives it to Story Story inside to Whelan Whelan gets a lovely first touch lays it back to Hannon now Gator just passing it in around the box in the corner. Nice crossfield ball to Kane Adam. What can he do with this one? Cuts inside, goes for a shot, pulls it over the bar. But Gator, they're finding a lot of space around the area and passing it with ease. And in local football, in a derby game that is happening, I say it's a northeast derby, it is Bly Spartans nil, Darlington one. Big thank you to Cow Daily. He's trying to help us get to a thousand subscribers. He's a top man. As the ball bounces out for a throw to Dagenham. It's just come off the head of Luke Hannant. And Ling drives that ball off of his shirt again. We know what he's going to do. And it's an impressive throw that he's got on him. And it would be silly not to utilise it. As the ball <laughs> flung right down the pitch there. And Dagenham tried to win the ball been out to the side that has been kept in goes out for a corner to Dagenham here on our right hand side it's been placed down Ryan Hill that's going to take it a lot of jostling towards the far post at the moment I think this is going to be a tight in swinger here Still a lot of movement. In comes now towards, well, it's very deep. But Gator are going to be able to come away with this one as Francis picks the ball up on the far side. If he looks up, Whelan's in acres of space, but just asking a little bit too much of Francis to ping that one over. And the ball's back with Montgomery. His story can bring the ball forward. Close down now. Pings it out to... Or rolls it out, should I say, to add on back to story. Francis, booty, finds the ball to Tenanga, who drops deep to show, does very well, gets it there, and Gator keep the ball moving, booty. is going to play it across to Richardson. Whelan finds himself on the left-hand side. There's a back to Job on the halfway line. Story now gets a touch inside the centre circle. This is to Francis. Francis looks and sees... Hannant in space, drives with the ball, crosses it in, wins a corner. Come off uh, Pereira, who coincidentally was the player that took the corner before. Apologies to any Dagenham fans, always want to get it right. As Whelan is the man to take the corner, takes it short to Francis. Francis and Whelan have space to pass it around each other. 
if you want to, but it goes out the area. Oh, lovely ball to Whelan. Pulls it across. Oh, good defending. Very good defending. Francis plays the ball off the Dagenham player and it goes out and it's a gated throw. Okay, so we're going to quickly, I'll try and quickly take this one. They have Francis. Gives it to Putty on the edge of the box. Goes for a ball towards the back post. Story was coming. Headed clear and Story just judged to have pushed the player in front of him as he went in for the header. And it's a free kick to Dagenham and Redbridge. Well, Paul William is listening in from South Devon. And uh, we've also got uh, Stephen Robinson. It's put, come on, Dodge, score a hat-trick and wrap the game up early. Well, wouldn't that be nice? But if you're just tuned in and you're of a gate of persuasion, Denanga and Brown start together up top. It's the beast and the bear. What a combination. They've both been in the goals of late for the start together. What will it produce? As Ling... Couldn't keep the ball in. It's a gated throw just on the halfway line between the dugouts. Something oh, the player has went down again here. I think it's the same player uh, in uh, Tavares. So looks like it's the same problem again. And I think that may be his evening over. You'd imagine he's still having trouble with that left knee. And Josh Hare is warming up to come on. So it does look like Nick Tavares is having his evening cut short tonight. Looked like he thought he might have been able to get through the game after that early knee injury there. I don't know if he's carrying a knock, but uh, unfortunately for him, he isn't able to continue. But that gives Josh Hare, number two, the chance to come on now. And he slots straight back into defence there. Looks like for like change. And they said, have a throw in between the dugouts to get this game back underway. And then first substitution for Dagman and Redbridge. Then the pitch, number four, Nick Tavares. Well, by number two, there is Josh. another goal in the National League. Walking on winning 1-0 away to Rochdale. Okay, it's said in possession. Story. Pass the ball to Richardson. He's just on the halfway line. Sees Denanga drop deep for the ball. It's just Francis. Francis does get it through the story. He was under pressure there, though, from Phipps. And get to get it out to Richardson. Sees a cross-field ball run there, but the delivery just hit the tagging him man. And now they try and break down the far side, as it is. Ryan Hill that plays it back. Hair gets his first touch, and it goes straight to a gate player. And now Francis can bring the ball forward. Lays it off to Booty. Booty lets it go through his legs to Richardson. Hannant, left-hand side of the pitch, just has to look for the runner. Sees Booty, who puts a cross in for left-hand side. He has, oh, and Dijon Brown was flying in there. Couldn't get a touch on it and cleared by Dagenham on the far side. Nodded on, but Story's there just to pick up the loose ball, control it, and give it to Richardson. Hannant, left-hand side, just in front of the Dagenham. Dug out, lays it back to Richardson. Hannant receives the ball back on the touchline. But he plays a cross field. Oh, a little bit of lack of communication there, but Job is going to keep the ball in. Hit a cross field ball. It come off Francis's head and just move the flight of the ball, but Gateshead have managed to get it back to Montgomery and we'll see them try and build again. Ball over the top towards Dejon Brown, beaten by Hare to the ball. Nodded on by Dagenham on the far side. Job was there to pass it to Kane Adam, who gets past his man with ease. Keeps driving with the ball. He cuts inside. Still going. If he looks up, he's got a teammate there to lay it off to. And he has. He's got it to Booty. I think got a touch off the referee there. Francis. Whelan. Job. All on the right-hand side here. Now... Francis, back out to Job. Francis just receives it in the middle. A lot of passing from Gateshead, just trying to build and get the movement going as Francis now sees Whelan. Lovely turn from Whelan. Can he lay the ball off? Catch it to Denanger on the edge of the area. 
He's twisting and turning just too much there, but can they pick up the loose ball? They can. As Hannon goes for an audacious one. Curler, but hits the defender and out it goes for a corner. Well, with Luke Hannon, you never know where them are going to go. He's no stranger to an absolute perler. Short corner taken again between Whelan and Francis. Francis carries the ball forward. He's got space. Edge of the area. Fran uh, Hannon, Hannon tries to pull the trigger. Goes out for a corner on the far side. It was a pie of force and that got his body in the way there. And this one's going to be a regular corner. Whipped in. It has been hit the first man, headed clear. And it's going to go out for a gated throw again on the far side. taken and at the moment it's being held up by Denanga on the far side, plays it down the line ball's going to come into the centre Dejon Brown's there, headed clear and Pereira turns but Dejon Brown did enough and Whelan picks up the loose ball Hannant gives it to Whelan on this left hand side, there is the target men in the middle, Hannant gets the ball crosses it in and Denanga was running but the ball was cleared as it went in false side great uh, man marking from Gator at the moment closing down anytime they're trying to clear the ball up the pitch Dagon Redbridge 22 minutes gone it's nil nil here if you are just joining us at Gated Stadium Vanarama National League action headed on on the far side but Dagenham, but Gateshead managed to get the ball forward. Denanga loses out in possession, though. And the ball comes off Whelan there, gets his body in the way. And Gateshead just absolutely throwing themselves in front. No. This ball is up in the air on the far side, won by Joe, but it goes out for a throw in to the visitors. Couple of substitutes already warming up for uh, Dagenham. I don't know if they've got any more players carrying a knock, but it's not a cold night, so they're not doing it to actually get warm. But Hessen Taylor on the far side picks up the ball for a throw. Oh, he's going to leave it for his teammate to take. That's Lewis Page. Throws it inside. And Gates had intercepted. And they didn't pass the ball crisply enough, but they do disrupt again and... Dagenham have to build from the middle, playing it through. It's going to fall to Gateshead, though, as Booty lays it off to Hannon on this left-hand side. Inside the Gateshead half, back to Richardson. Booty, back to Story, who dropped deep to give space for the pass, but he carries the ball forward himself. Lays it out to Mamadou Job on the far side. Forward to Kane Adam. Can he open up down this right-hand channel? He sees Denanga in the centre, and the ball hoofed out of touch on the far side by Hare in the Dagenham defence. Throw quickly taken, though. There's Adam. Uh, sorry, Job plays the ball across to Richardson. Richardson now just passes it in the centre circle to Story. Story sees Hannant in space, but unless Hannant's grown to 12 foot tall, he'll not be able to keep that one in, sadly, and it's a throw in to Dagenham. Ling drying his shirt again to launch this one up. Up it goes. And Gateshead trying to win the ball, but it's been scooped up forward. Story's there to marshal it back to Montgomery. Just a little bit of scrappy passage of play. Passing doesn't mean that crisp from both sides a little bit, but Whelan manages to get the ball. Didn't get it to his teammate, and Kane Adam was just caught there late, and it's a free kick to Gated. And hopefully, Kane Adam's all right. Uh, Gated looked like the Man City of the National League here. Well, they are playing nice pass and attractive football, but they need to capitalise when they get in the final third with the ball in the box. They've been restricted to shots from outside of the box thus far. 
and a yellow card is coming out for the Dagenham player, which I think it might be um, Lewis Page. So the first yellow of the game has been handed out for a late tackle on Kane Adam. Once again, a big thank you to all of you that's joined us on the audio stream and also those on National League TV. Okay, it's going to go for a, a long punt into the box from practically the halfway lane here. All the big men are up there. They're going to try and use this set piece. In comes the ball. The delivery story is coming around the back. Ball nodded clear. Story's going to be the man, though. But he didn't keep it in. He let it roll out. And Gator have the opportunity to get a ball into the box here as Regan Booty does the same as what Ling has done all game and dry that ball on his shirt. So Booty takes a few steps back and he's ready to launch this one in. Who will he aim for as he gets it towards Job and the ball hits the first man and cleared. But Franciscan, lovely little flick, will get the ball to Richardson. Francis plays it across to Hannon to finds himself on the right hand side of the pitch at the moment. He's got himself over there. And now Gita can build again through Story looking for movement. Gets it out to Adam. Back to Story. Job inside his own half. Richardson crossed the halfway line. Still going, Richardson. Into the centre. Sees, oh, trying to play a ball through. Dejan Bremery tries to win the ball back. And now get, um, Dagenham are on the break. As they do have Phipps and it's uh, Ryan Hill that latched onto the ball. He's on the left-hand side of the box. He's about to cut in with it, lays it off, and he has a shot into Ed Francis. Second shot comes in. It's looping in the air and well-headed away by Hannant. But Dagan Redbridge pick it up, and that was a real scare for Gated. But at the moment, it's a corner to the visitors, and the ball was uh, played off Hannant by Harry Phipps. And uh, that was a good uh, passage of play from... Ryan Hill, when he latched onto the ball on the far side, he managed to get the ball in and lay it off. I think it was Josh Reese that had the initial shot. Corner about to come in. Down to our right. In it comes. It's going to be low towards the front post. It's up in the air. Gator battling to get there to pick up the loose ball, and Denanga does poke it clear, but only as far as a red shirt. Gates had managed to disrupt and get the ball forward. Whelan looks to keep the ball going, and he does. He's got Kane Adam up there, but he's asking a bit much, but Gates do very well. And Kane Adam's going to try and race down to get this, but the ball too much on it. Out it goes for a goal kick. But uh, Whelan looked like he might have been able to get the, a pass off earlier, but Dan Redbridge did close down well. Well, Justin's going to take the goal kick here. And it goes to Ling, who nods it in on the line, and it's judged to have went out. Goal kick to a uh, free kick to. Oh, there must have been a free kick there. Sorry, I didn't see that. But it's a free kick on the line. Must have been handball. And the game is back underway. As Story gives it back to Richardson. As they keep the ball moving across the back lane. Forward to Francis. Booty. Hannon gets it on the left-hand side. Looks to get some more players moving. Kane Adam is in acres of space on the far side. If someone can get the ball to him, he's still out there hugging the right-hand touch lane. Booty turns, receives the ball, plays it out to Hannant. Hannant's got wheel and run on this near side. Dijon Brown holds the ball up. It just skims away from him. Was he fouled? Referee says no. And now dragging him on the attack. And he gets past Booty. Ball played across to the far side as Phipps holds it up. Does well. He's got Hill for company, but lays it back. And now Page can find a teammate on the far side. But Dagenham couldn't keep the ball moving forward. They reset and pass it back but now the ball comes over the top ball's going to bounce through here to phipps phipps keeps it in and we're seeing pereira lay it back to hessen tyler son of andy 
People of a certain age will remember him in the football league with Gillingham, of course. Ball over the top, up towards. Oh, the crucial interception there by Story. Gets the ball back to Montgomery and clear it out there because Josh Reese had made a good run through. And at the moment, we're just seeing a bit more possession from Dagenham at the moment. And a free kick given away there from Mamadou Job. It's about 30 yards out here. 35 25. Sorry, 25 to 30 yards out. Very central. In fact, you couldn't get more central here. And the referee just marches them back for the 10 yards and he's going to get his magic spray out here. As we've got an updated score in the National League, uh, Alton are winning 2-0 now at home against York. Ebbsfleet still one up away to Aldershot. But we do have this free kick to be taken here. It looks like the ball is going to go across. And it has to the far side. They want to whip it in. As Page has the ball up against Whelan. Drives with it down and there was Mamadou Job to tackle it and put it out for a throw. Well, Throw going to be taken by Ling on the far side. We know what's coming. It's going to be another long throw. He's had good precision with these thus far. So, in it comes now. It's a long one up towards the six-yard area. It's been headed clear. Oh, and a shot from the edge of the area. And goes through Montgomery there. Sees it through a crowd down to his right. And he quickly clears it up the pitch, looking for Denanga, and that's going to be way too much on it, but it's been nodded out for a throw-in just past this dugout on our left-hand side. And Gateshead take it quickly to Richardson, just inside his own half, plays it back to Story. Job can bring the ball forward. Turns and gives it back to Story, just inside his own half. Richardson out to Hannant. Just keeps the ball in there. Gated looking to break down. It's Dagenham side as Richardson gets it through to Booty Booty now and turn out to Hannant. Hannant, can he get past his man and cross it in? He can. Needs someone there. It's been taken away from Denanga's head and headed away again. But there's Richardson going for a, a special one. But didn't get the special connection. And over the bar it looked more like a rugby kick in the end. But it is still nil-nil here at Gateshead International Stadium. Gateshead nil, Dagenham Redbridge nil. 33 minutes. Well, AFC failed or winning one nil away to Kiddyminster as well. What a second half of the season they are having. As the ball story goes up for it. Also a Dagon Redbridge shirt, and now they try and move through as Pereira plays the ball across the hill. Hill has his opportunity for a shot. He pulls it back, goes for the shot and puts it over. He did all the hard work. He had left Mamadou Job on the ground, but he couldn't hit the target. And a let off for Gateshead here. It's lovely control from Hill to bring the ball back onto his other foot. Mamadou Job just slipped. Give him the space, but he snatched at it. Montgomery plays it across to Richardson. We're just starting to see a little bit more urgency from Dagenham. They're trying to close down, but they left a big space in doing so. And now out the two, Brown on the left-hand side. He's got Hannon coming through. He plays it down, underlap, pulls it back across, wins a corner. And Gateshead... Well, they really did capitalise on Dagenham committing men forward there. And has went for a corner, actually. It's went for a goal kick. Just having a look around to see if there's any more scores around the National League that we haven't seen. Aldershot have pulled level with Ebbsfleet at home. It's a level game. Header won by Brown, but out it goes for a throw between the dugouts to Dagenham and Redbridge. Ling 
once again drives the ball. Well, if he ever retires, he'd have a job in shot put with a throw like that. But at the moment, Dagenham just pass it around the back to build hair, plays it out to the right hand side. Okay, to try and close down here, but it's passed all the way back to Justin, who clears the ball up to the halfway line. Mamadou Job wins the header on challenge, but the ball's going to come back and can get to pick up the second ball they can as Whelan does well for Francis. Francis dinks it over there to Kane Adam. Plays it back now to Job. Whelan. Gives it to Francis. Francis looks up. Hannon's in space here, but he gets through the middle. Booty, booty. Just marshalled off the ball, though, by Ling. Did very well. And Gateshead don't get the second ball there. It's played through, but Job does very well to come back and interrupt that ball forward. It's going to be Job that will bring this ball forward now. In the centre of defence. Plays it across to Story. Hannant. Hannant plays it first time to Denanga. Back to Hannant and Booty. Denanga. Booty. Nice bit of passing football from Gateshead, but they've just got a little bit tangled there, and the ball is taken away and cleared by Dagenham. And Gateshead starting to get back in a rhythm, but not really penetrating that final third as of yet. Kane Adam on the far side was just about to start a run, but the ball didn't come. Richardson to Whelan, back to Richardson. Dijon Brown comes short, turns, does very well, lays it off to Kane Adam. Now he can open up on the far side. He's going to try and beat his man. A little bit of trickery, puts a cross in, wins a corner. Very exciting player, Kane Adam. Anytime he gets on the ball, you're just waiting to see what he can come up with. His pace is electric and his footwork is none too shabby either. But it's 38 minutes gone. It's a nil down Redbridge, nil. We await this delivery from Francis on the far side. In it comes, up in the air. Oh, Dijon Brown did get a head on it, couldn't direct it anywhere. It's been hooked clear as Richardson nods the ball out and it goes just out next to the uh, dugout of Dagenham. Well, we await the ball boy to give the ball, although it's getting dried off by the uh, assistant manager, I think it is there. Now Ling gives it an extra dry. Well, Hannant keeps the ball, uh, doesn't the ball goes out for a throw. In the final third for Tagging them here. Rochdale have drawn level with Woking 1-1. One, one. Well, I've just realised he's called Sam Ling, and if you go with his initials, it's Sling. Slingshot, and in comes the Slingshot. Up towards, and it went out off a Dagenham player, and I think it was... Uh, Trying to see the player's name there. Sorry, Lewis. Oh, no, it wasn't Lewis Page. I think it was Phipps that uh, headed it out. But yeah, no, Sam Ling. Yeah, the slingshot. It's a magnificent throw he's got. And now, Gated played back to Montgomery after a short goal kick. Dagenham trying to push out on it, but Gated trying to capitalise and play the ball through and get it moving quickly as Whelan picks it up. Booty. Oh, didn't get it through, but he's going to pick up the second ball. Nods it down to Dijon Brown. Brown, lovely turn, but he's ran into trouble and loses the ball. But with a bit of luck, Kane Adam picked up the loose ball on the far side. Wheeling through the centre. He's got Denanga on the far side. Who he gives it to. He's got Kane Adam that's going to come on the overlap. Plays it through to him. Fortunately, he comes away with it. He's still got the ball. Pulls it down. Pulls it back. And, oh, it's been nodded out for a... Oh, I thought it's going to be a... A uh, late tackle there, but it's went for a throw in on the far side. Kane Adam 
just entertaining with everything that he does at the moment. Adam gets the ball back. Puts the cross in. There's Dijon Brown coming in. Oh, he just couldn't get the touch on it. And out it goes for the goal kick. As the Tain and Weir stand starts to ramp up the noise here. Forty-one minutes we're into now, and it's still nil-nil. If you are just joining us here on the National League TV or the Heat Army podcast, Justin is going to take the goal kick, and his kicking's been impeccable so far tonight. But Booty wins the header. Denanga in a foot race, and he's got to try and chase this down. And uh, Longe King just. Got in front and played it back. He has the ball now. And the ball, wayward pass. And Gates will have a throw halfway inside the Dagenham half. Once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm by myself tonight. Normally we have the fantastic Mark Rivers. But he's away covering another the game tonight. So uh, just me by myself. I uh, hope it's adequate enough for you as the ball comes off Richardson. Well, he's given it the other way. I thought that was a throw. It's been taken quickly as Whelan has the ball. Takes down the corner flag, gets it to Richardson. Richardson looks to put the ball in. He does, and it's deep and too deep, and the keeper can come out and just pluck that out the air with ease. But, yeah, just as I was saying there, uh, by myself, hope it's uh, all right. It's always, always nice to have a, a cool commentator that'll help you analyse. But um, at the moment, we've got an open game, and it's all to play for. Story went up for the header, didn't get it, and uh, Phipps had headed it on, but it's going to be kept in now by Pereira. Pereira up against Richardson, gets past him, takes it down to the dead ball line, pulls it back across. Story's there to poke it clear. Hannon picks up the loose ball, plays it inside, and now it's been up to Whelan. Whelan, it's just a little bit heavy and bounced away from him, and now Phipps plays it inside. Pereira plays it. And didn't get it back, but Gator can break now as Francis has the ball, gets it out to Whelan, Whelan has options, plays it forward to Dijon Brown, drives forward with the ball, but he's got company, and now Hannon there for support, he's still going, Brown gets past his man, pulls it back across, corner, oh, great stuff from the youngster on loan from Derby County, and he's just went down there, I don't know if he caught a, a late knock there, or he's... Dijon Brown is up, so the first start together for Dijon Brown and Marcus Denanga. Of course, Denanga's known as the bear, but Brown's been a beast in front of goal of late. So I'm going to coin that one myself. I'll take credit for that. The bear and the beast, they're up top. In comes the corner from Whelan. It's a deep one, headed clear. Can Gator pick up the loose ball? The can on the far side. And Gator can start again through Hannant, who's on the right-hand side. Pings the ball up towards Story. A lot of shirt pulling there. The referee doesn't give it, but Story's shirt was halfway up his back. And now gets a play down the line. Whelan, left hand side, cuts in with it, gives it to Hannon, who's still in the centre. He's got Kane Adam on the right hand side, goes for his shot himself, and the ball ricochets back. It's going to be picked up by Job just inside his own half. And Gates said, turning the screw a little bit possession wise and starting to get in around the box Francis Story Whelan Story gets the ball out on the right hand side plays it forward to Jean Brown uh, sorry to Marcus Denango a heavy touch goes out for a throw on the far side well just have a little look around. Uh, can't see any more goals that are around in the National League that we haven't already mentioned. At the moment, ball launched forward, headed on. Story pumps the ball over the top, and Denanga and Brown both chase down, but there is hair to head it back to the goalkeeper. Sensible defending. Well, just, um, just taking his time here. The fourth official does have the board in his hands, so I think we've probably had it about two or three minutes with the substitution. There hasn't been many stoppages, but uh, there was the one early on for 
Tavares. Ball save. Pereira has the ball, holding it up, does very well. Three minutes are added on here at Gateshead International Stadium in the first half of this game between Gateshead and Dagenham. Anyone's game at the moment. As the ball played forward, Pereira turns, a little bit of skill, lays it off. Played down the far side as Reese plays the ball back down. The ball over the top, though, and the ball was too heavy and out of went. And all the shot have taken the lead at home to Ebbsfleet. It is 2-1 there now and 3-0 to Alternum at home to York, whose season is starting to fizzle out quite quickly down in Yorkshire. Richardson has space to carry the ball forward, but stops, gives it back to Story. Story in turn can pick out Job. Back to Story. Gets it looking for the best way to make shape, uh, make a space and shape as they go forward. Cross to Job in the centre circle. Job can carry it forward himself. Still going Kane Adams the ball on the far side. He didn't see it. Gives it to Whelan. Now Kane Adams has the ball. Back to Whelan. Whelan. Oh, gets the ball across. It's nodded forward to Nanga. Oh, just couldn't get through. I think the offside flag might have went off there. But uh, at the moment, it's in the goalkeeper's hands. Now we're about a minute and a half into that. And three minutes added on here at the end of the first half. Another powerful kick from the Dagenham keeper. As Phipps didn't know where it was, Gates had managed to get the ball under control and try and loop it up towards Dinanga, but Hare's there to head it away. And Whelan tries to get the ball under control, but Pereira gets there in front of him. And Dinanga making life hard there, but couldn't win the ball. Oh, booty. Well, judged to have fouled there. He did put a leg out and come away with the ball, but did he catch the man? Referee says yes, as Hill. Has the ball, gives it now to Ling. Hessen Taylor plays it to Pereira. Pereira's got, he sees the man on the far side. He didn't see it. He was in acres of space, Page. He didn't want to put it over. So it builds with Hessen Taylor again. Dijon Brown comes off. It's a throw in just in front of the gate to dug out here. Well, Ling with yet another long throw. Well, the ball launched forward. Cleared by Gateshead, but cleared back by Longe King. Can Gateshead pick up the loose ball? They can. There's a nice ball from Booty, and the half-time whistle goes. It's nil-nil here at Gateshead Stadium between Gateshead and Dagenham and Redbridge. Gateshead... Much the better of the possession, but Dagenham did have a spell midway through the first half where they did create a few little problems for Gateshead. But on the whole, Gateshead just on top, but that means nothing at the moment. There's another 45 minutes of football to go. Um, just to mention to all our audio listeners, there is a lot of you on um, tuned in tonight. We're very, very thankful for that. But if you'd like to come over and join us on YouTube, where you can send us messages as uh, people are doing already. And uh, we've got one here uh, to say uh, someone's at the match. But I'm at the match, but listening to the commentary. Well, that's great, but you're probably 30 seconds behind. Or, or I'm 30 seconds behind you by the time you hear it. But uh, thank you nonetheless. It's an absolute pleasure. So if you'd like to come over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, help us reach a thousand people, see if the algorithm changes, and if we can reach more people on Tyneside, if not the world, because that's what it's about. And uh, right, well, as I say, I am on my own, so I am going to play a highlight from the Heat Army podcast. We'll be back in about 10 minutes so I can catch a breath of air and have a drink and wet my whistle. Uh, but we will be back in about, oh, 10 minutes. That should be a very big show. And we have another, one second, where is it? Oh, we have another Heat Army podcast polo T-shirt to give away as well. Uh, so we'll Ooh. be doing that on that show. So uh, everyone in uh, involved for that right i'd be amiss if i didn't bring our guest in straight away uh, i haven't seen him since wembley uh lovely lad lovely family as well hello luke how are you doing not too bad costco for chadwick anyone yeah <laughs> 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 well, 
<laughs> you can have them, but <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Before we oh. go any further, lads, I was talking about the podcast yesterday oh, yeah. and at the match, and I was talking to a load of Gated fans. And look, do you realise how many people th- know realise how good you are at the Gated? And amongst the Gated fans, that give you nothing but compliments yesterday. No, I like oh. honestly, I. Generally, I'm not even joking. It's, it must be a Gateshead thing because, um, you know, every, it, just your fan base in general. When I went down to Wembley, obviously, I, I met you, Dave, um, and I think I met one of the directors there. And, um, yeah, you know, it's, just, it's just up north. It's just northern, isn't it? Just very friendly people, to be honest, um, especially from your parts. Um, well, so, yeah, it was it really good. But also, I think we bumped into Owen Bailey's parents down there. Yeah, they're um, lovely. Family, yeah. And they, you know, were very, but very look, nice people. Look, so. you're, you're, you're also like us because we're very nice and we never beat you. It's, it's very <laughs> nice of us. <laughs> well, I mean, we, just, we, we just turn up and go, go on. You, you, we're not going to beat you. You know, we're not even score goals past you now. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it, I think it's a better, maybe you'll disagree, but it's a better point for you on Monday than it is for us. I, I don't so. know. Us yeah. being at home, you know, you, you probably expect us to win. Oh no, you don't have to do this, do you? Put that business. Davy, Davy, I've got my pillows for the highlights. I'll just yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just look. And of course, there's the Shane, all its glory, and uh, obviously, oh, I pressed something. Uh, that, there it is, in all its glory. That was all the highlights that we had. I didn't download it properly. But I, <laughs> uh, I want to ask a serious question. That one that we had at your place in, like, I think it was early March. March, oh, right. Yeah. Mm. Or the one on Saturday, which was actually worse. The oh, one in March. Yeah, mm, that probably one. that one still. But it wasn't a pretty watch on Saturday, was it? Uh, it's no. not Saturday, Yesterday. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. As um, I mean, obviously, I was I was unable to I had the family. I wasn't able to um, listen in, so I was following it by Twitter updates. And then at half time, I thought, well, it's nil nil. You know, obviously, you, you, you just fear you're going to lose to a one nil at the Shea, like 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 normal. Um, but it was just the case. And then when the scene went a man down, we have a little group chat uh, on WhatsApp, and I was like, I'm not hopeful here, lads. I said like, a, a draw would be a miracle. Uh, but with a less expletives. Um, but uh, I think <laughs> for us to get a, a draw, I think considering uh, going down to 10 men was 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 a good result for us. Yeah. I think it's... if you went to 11 men, well, I think we could, you could have, it could have gone on until about nine o'clock at night and none of it <laughs> would have scored. It was just so, I don't know what it was. It just felt like we were never going to score. We just, we're lacking something going forward. Of course, I think if De Sarouwe was playing, we would have gone on to win. And even at half time, I was thinking we'll come out in the second half and we'll probably go and beat you away when Gates are tired because we know you're usually carrying on from last season better in the first half than the second. But it, it was just a proper naff game once again. You actually kept the ball very well. But I have to say, going forward, I think we defended well. But Dinango and Chadwick didn't have a sniff. Don't get me wrong, I'd take them at Halifax any day, but <laughs> you know what I mean. I think for us, um, there was six changes as well because we, I mean, we'll get into it later on um, when we cover the, the game on Saturday. It's, sorry, the massacre. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a great game in, uh, on Saturday, but for us to make that many changes and show a little bit of strength in depth was was one of the positives that we can come away with, especially because uh, we've hemorrhaged a few goals this season, even though we've started well. Um, to keep a clean sheet with 10 men, I think was a, a massive shot in the arm to show that we can that we can keep a, a, a tight at the back. Yeah. So. What was your opinion of the referee, Luke? Uh, I'm trying to think now, because I never like to blame the refs, to be honest. I always try and think, <laughs> well, we... Try I not think, to swear. Didn't we have a? I think we had a call for a penalty. To be fair, but I know our fans weren't big. Were big. There were a lot of booing coming from our end. I don't know if any of you heard that. Oh, uh, that's, that's one of the questions we've just had there, Luke. What's your thoughts on the boos at full time yesterday? Pathetic, to be honest. Um, I'm going to be. There's something about our fan base is, you know, for us to be supporting Halifax. I think says a lot, which I I appreciate to everyone who does support Halifax. Same with you guys at Gates, and I think you know. Anyone could support a Man United or Man City, but there's something just proper toxic about our fan base. You know, we, we could have been top of the league yesterday. 
and then we draw mm. nil nil to you guys and there'd be booze at full time. Yeah. Just, I don't I don't understand it. I, the margins I are so it. fine because as you say, just two points you could have been top of the league and yeah. it's nothing really to boo about, really, is it? Like, no, it's not. Nothing, it wasn't the fact that the players weren't trying. Yes, you might say we probably could have been a bit more positive going forward and being a bit more direct, but you were just very well organised. I think we have to give you credit. Um, we're just lacking quality, and you, you're not gonna, you can't boo players for lacking quality. It's not their fault to a certain extent, yeah. is it? And it's it's been, frustrating, but have you been it, I think sending, yeah, I think I think they're sending off change the game because she's weren't getting a kick until we had a man sent off. Yeah, yeah. you were no, we weren't even touching the ball. To be fair, it were it were tough watch. I don't That's think so. I, I asked the linesman to throw another ball on for you so he could have a kick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, we had we had the poor scores looking like as a as a linesman on our side where we were, mm-hmm. and what a load of crap that bloke was. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Hey, and the, ref, by the, way, the referee had, gave some very curious decisions both ways. I thought. But hey, we had we had, we had no arguments about the sending off. I mean, he, he could have actually went off in the first off incident. Never mind the yeah. second off. So, yeah, yeah. Thought, we thought we were just a booking. It was a book. It was a second booking. I'm, I will admit that. Mm-hmm. But um, well, the first, we were, first booking could have been a sending off, Luke. The, yeah. the one in the first off. Yeah, I think honestly, though, I wouldn't say we were the better team. Even went down to ten men. Um, I don't think either was looked like we're going to score. But I thought if yeah. it was a team that I'd say. They would probably edged it for you guys, which is quite surprising because we're usually very good on home turf. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, was... just a little sorry, side yeah, sorry, Mickey. Uh, Mickey, I saw your face in the back of Freddie Armstrong's YouTube video. You looked a bit unhappy. At <laughs> I'm going to have to have a look for that. Uh, it's Choose probably best. Carefully. It's probably best I don't see because uh, Poppy and Tabitha will be listening, but. I'm not saying what I said, but it was along the lines of you, silly yeah. boy. Yeah. Were you a bit upset, Mickey? Well, I'd seen the first incident and I thought he was lucky not to get sent off there. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, myself, if the referees went and had a, if the linesman or someone's gone in, see, I th- think he might have got that wrong. As soon as Hannon made the next mistake, he was going, I was going to send them off. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. The thing is, now it gives the, the likes of uh, Tom Allen a chance to start. Um, yeah. So the, it shows the strength and depth that we've got this season a bit better than, obviously, a lot better than last season. Um, yeah. Got another one here. Obviously, there was a debut on Saturday. Uh, Joe Grayson uh, had a fantastic game at the back. Looking forward to seeing more of him. Mickey, of course, yeah. you were there. Um, how did the yeah. set in at the back? He done he really well. Um, I thought he done excellent. Uh, like I see for the first half, I think I think there was three shots in the whole game, was it, Luke? It was three or four like, shots. I haven't looked at Wise Scout so, yet. But yeah, yeah so. and w- we must have had about eighty-five percent possession in that first half. Yeah, mm-hmm. you were you were the. I'm going to admit you were the better team, and I think you were better Gateshead side than the side we saw last season. Um, I personally think, and like you mentioned, you had players out in, you know, is it Whelan? Now he's out. Yeah, Whelan's out for yeah. a bit. Yeah. Ten yeah. We're going to come into that later on, but of course, if yeah. I haven't seen on social media, he's got a, a, a stage three or a category three, grade yeah. three uh, in the five, which can take a while. So hopefully, you know, you don't want to rush him back, but hopefully he doesn't get him back. That's the main yeah. thing. Could you hear we're telling we where to shove your Yorkshire puddings? <laughs> oh, it will do that. I like that yeah. because the problem that we've got is because we when sides bring less than five, well, any um, stand, they're so far away from each other. It's from where everyone's chanting. It's very hard to give it back and forth, isn't it? Which is part of football yeah. and what we love. But. <laughs> The Heat Army Podcast needs your help. No, we don't need money. All we need is you to do one simple thing. It'll take less than a second if you could hit that like button, the subscribe button, and share whatever post that we put up regarding Gator Football Club. It'll go a long way in helping the show build and ultimately helping us push the club to the moon.
Well, you join us back here at Gates International Stadium for Gateshead versus Dagenham and Redbridge, and it is nil-nil here at half time. Uh, big thank you, everyone that has stayed tuned in and watching us on uh, Twitter and on uh, YouTube. Uh, that was a little highlight uh, from an episode earlier this season where we spoke to Halifax fan Luke Walsh and um, I say we, we need to update that. <laughs> I do apologise for people that uh, watch or listen to the commentary every week on our audio stream um, for our half-time message that does go out. But uh, as I say, that is a, a gist of the Heat Army podcast. We also look back at highlights and uh, everything else in between. So if you would like to con- uh, to join us, please hit subscribe and join us uh, next week on the Heat Army podcast. We're not going to do one on Thursday because we had a show yesterday. And you can go back and watch that one on our YouTube channel well, as well as you can also go back and watch our vlog from Saturday as well, which is in the video section of our YouTube channel. So please do uh, get involved with that. It'll be lovely to have you there and uh, say, interact with us and hopefully be here for when we uh, take on say, the rest of the league campaign. There's nine games remaining after this one for Gator to get into the playoffs. And there's only one game remaining for Gator to get themselves to Wembley in the FA Trophy. It's a fantastic end of the season, all to play for, all exciting, and it should be good. Oscar Williamson has put uh, score predictions for the second half. You can put one in if you want. Uh, Mick Scully's put two up front. Hasn't worked for me. I'd sacrifice one of them and get another midfielder in, get control of the game. Uh, well, we'll see. There's still another half of football to go. We'll have to see how it pans out. But uh, the Beast and the Bear are up top. I'll go through the half-time scores in the National League. It's Aldershot 2, Ebbsfleet 1, Altrinham 3, York 0, Barnet Eastley postponed, Chestfield 1, Oxford City 0. It's uh, uh, FC Halifax and Oldham was postponed tonight. Oh, Gates said 0, Dagenham Redbridge 0, of course, yeah. Kenningston 0, AFC Fylde 1, Maidenhead and Hartlepool uh, was also postponed uh, this evening. We've got Rochdale 1, Walking 1, Sully Hill Moors 0, Boreham Wood 0, and Southend 1, Dorking Wanderers 0. And then there was another game off tonight in Wheelstone versus Bromley. And uh, that is how the half time scores do go. And if the half time live table gets it sit in 6 at the moment, but that is just the half time. The live league table means nothing. It, what what matters is at the end of the 90 minutes when that whistle has blown right across the fixtures in the league. And uh, the referees are back out now, as are both teams on the pitch. And we're getting ready here for the second half of Gator versus Dagen Redbridge, live on the Heat Army podcast and on National League TV. Well, I told a little lie there. We didn't have the full quarter of players out. Luke Hannant has just snuck back onto the pitch. As has Richard and Story. And Job, it's a good job I don't go on countdown. Hard enough reading, and my maths isn't great. <laughs> It's a shooting towards the Fallen End, Dagenham towards the River Tyne in this second half. And Gateshead looking to keep themselves in the playoff picture. And Dagenham wanting to get a late push to get in there. So we're underway. It's Dagenham ping the ball up towards Phipps. Ball bounces through to Kane Adam, who can play the ball forward to Denanga. Denanga goes it to Whelan. Whelan skips past his player, but too much on it. And Reese gets into the ball. Hill can play the ball inside. Gets the ball back. Tries to play the ball forward. Comes off. Mamadou Job for a throw in here on the left hand side. Hill has Page has the ball, plays it inside the ball. It's going to be kept in on the dead ball line. Played back. Page now gives to Hill. And it is going to be a Pia Forson that drives with it down left hand side. Can he get a cross in? He can. He pulls it back, but Gated clear it out for a throw 15 yards from the corner flag. And that man, Ling, is going to come over with the slingshot as it's been named now. 
Dries the ball in familiar fashion on his shirt. All the big men forward for Dagenham here to await this long throw, and it is towards the six-yard area. It's been got away, and there's a push on. I think it's Mamadou Job there. Okay, it said clear the ball up the pitch from the free kick. Denanga gets the ball to Brown, Whelan, lays it off to Brown, drives into the ball, into the box, stops, pulls it back. Francis with the shot. Oh, and the keeper goes down to his right hand side and saves left hand side even. And uh, well, the defence carried on moving as the ball was pulled back. Francis just couldn't get the power on. Well, ball comes out to Page on this left-hand side. He's put it into the centre. Not a clear. It's going to be picked up by Hill on the edge of the box. Lays it off. And now we can try and get going. As Was Hannon fouled on the far side? He was. And it's a free kick to get it inside their own area. Montgomery takes a short kick. Booty has to play it back to Montgomery. Seeing Dagenham try to push a little bit more with the ball as Kane Adam tries to chase down, comes off him. Hare has to play it back. And it's been cleared by Justin in the Dagenham goal. It's up in the air at the moment. Whelan wins the header but couldn't direct it towards a teammate. Chested down. Francis latches onto the loose ball. Booty puts it out to Hannon on the left hand side, and he's got space to run. He's up against Ling, keeps driving with the ball, puts the ball across the goal mouth, and nobody there to challenge goes out for a goal kick. And somebody has very, very pungent aftershave near me here at the commentary desk. It's all I can smell. Well, Justin taking his time here to place the ball down. Looks like it's going to go to the right-hand side of the pitch here. Yeah, another great kick from the Dagenham goalkeeper, but bounces right through and out for a throw to get it on the far side. And quickly taken. Across the defence to Job. Job can bring the ball forward. There is another goal in the National League. Aldershot are leading three goals to one. Add on back to Job. Job with a crossfield ball, and there's way too much on that. And Richardson couldn't get to it, and out it goes. Graham Jones says Lynx Africa. It smells a bit more expensive than Lynx Africa, but it's still quite strong. Ball up towards the Nanga on the halfway line and Longe King does very well but only picks up a shirt and Gateshead give it to Francis now Dijon Brown left hand side but the Nanga in the middle Francis is busting a good to get up there as well holds the ball up and gives it back to Booty Booty now looks to play a cross field ball gets it to Kane Adam who just gets it under control Job inside to Francis, centre of the pitch, plays it across to Booty. Booty now finds Hannant. Booty puts a cross in from distance, and well, he wins the ball back. Dijon Brown tries to get the ball off Hessen Taylor, gets it back though. Francis managed to disrupt, and now Hannant has the ball. Back to Story. Story has to control it there. Does well to get it to Francis, and gets it just regroup. Booty down the line to Hannant. Good vision. He needs some one to aim for. Gets it to Whelan, who made the run. There's a back down the line to Booty. Booty. There's an inside to Francis. All inside the Dagenham half at the moment. There's Job. Still going with the ball. Playing like Ryan Giggs at the minute. Puts the ball out of the far. To Whelan gets the ball. Denanga tries to hold it up. Now Job has the ball. Denanga. Oh. And Keith said just. Not using the ball to good effect, though, winning it in areas, but they couldn't get the ball moving to create the chances. Richardson nods the ball and says, Booty has to get there and wins it. Francis pokes it through. As now the ball's picked up in the centre, a little bit sloppy from Gateshead. 
but they do disrupt but the ball forward for Hill Hill he's only got one man up there now he's got another one coming twisting and turning Joby's done him puts a cross in comes shot and Richardson just managed to oh, get a foot out and block it sorry it was Job that managed to block it and Gate said just need to get some composure back Well, Neil Robinson said, did he miss anything? No, it is still nil-nil. 52 minutes gone here at Gateshead International Stadium. If you all just joined us. But Gateshead, and they've just lost out there. A story's been left behind. And now Pereira, edge of the area, drives the ball, goes for the shot, pulls it wide. And Gateshead let off the hoop again there. But he did have to shoot from the edge of the box. Ben Warman is going through an intense warm-up down to our left. We can get to take this goal kick here. There's someone saying, are you sure it's not the smell of Wembley just a little bit early? No, Wembley doesn't smell like this. Well, ball back to story. Just gets there. It's a dangerous one. Gates had need to get back in their rhythm as Montgomery receives the ball from Job. Monty puts it out to Kent Richardson, who can plays it back to Monty again. Booty receives it from Monty. Just slow it down somewhat, or it might speed up here as Whelan has we uh on, on the overlap. He got it, plays it, pulls it back across, couldn't find Denanga, but there's Whelan to pick up the loose ball back out to Hannans. Can he get a delivery in? Lays it off to Booty. Booty tries to play it through to Whelan, gets the ball back. Now Job Gates said trying to create something here in the final third. Hannon on the far side drives down to the dead ball and crosses the ball in. There's Denanga taking off his head. Job nods it to Adam. Now he's right hand side of the box. Pulls it back across. There's nobody there. And now Booty gets the ball. Edge of the area. Lays it off the to Hannon. Hannon goes for his shot. When maybe the cross might have been the better thing to do. And it's a goal kick to Dagenham here. Just having a look about to see if there's any more scores in the National League. Nothing since the last time we updated you. Warman still going through an intense warm-up down to our left. One in the air by Dagenham, the clearance. Gator to try to win the ball back. They do through. Whelan, he dinks it over. And now Kane Adam can bring the ball forward. But Dagan, we got back in numbers. Gator need to get some more men up and around the box. But at the moment, they're passing it around midfield with Francis. Richardson puts it to Hannant. Hannant to Francis again. Lots of men forward for Gator, but they haven't picked up a killer pass. Dijon Brown drops deep to get involved, plays it out to Richardson. Booty. Finds Whelan, lovely turn. He's going to put it out to Adam here on the right-hand side. The delivery has to be good. Can he get it into the box? Lays it back to Francis. Looks for the ball through the centre to Denanga. Headed clear, but Gator can pick up the loose ball. Story's got a man on, and Francis manages to poke it through to Richardson. And now the ball out to Hannon, left-hand side. Gator just trying to change gear here. And now lays back to Richardson, gets it to... The Brown on the edge of the area, just taking off his foot, but he does well to disrupt, but he pulls on his shirt, and it's a free kick to Dagenham. Well, we're also seeing, uh, I think it is Lyra Kasani going for a warm-up. It isn't Lyra Kasani because he isn't on the bench. <laughs> Tom Allen. Be a bit hard for him to warm up. Oh, we've got this free kick yet to be taken. It's going to be taken now, though. Right outside the area. Ball launched up. Tom McBride warms up as well as Dagenham have the ball on the right-hand side. 
Now they can put a cross in as a man at the far post, but the cross didn't come through. It got to blocked by Hannon. Now a cross comes in from Hessen Taylor and nodded forward, but there was Kane Adam to help clear the ball. And Gator need to pick this one up as Francis does. He's got Whelan there, but he couldn't get it through and a foul on Francis. His foot was just caught as he was trying to play the ball forward. Referee pulls it back. Free kick to Gator. Quickly taken though. Ball over the top and it's wasted. As Hannon was the man that was uh, issued the run there, but it didn't happen. Now one of the uh, Dagenham coaches is having a word with the fourth official there. He's quite unhappy with something. Brewing on the far side to Dagenham. Lovely mild night on Tyneside. It's not having any issue on the game. There is little to no wind. And it's quite mild. Perfect evening for it as the ball goes out for a goal kick to Gateshead. Well, we now look to keep this ball moving as Montgomery pings the ball up to Denanga. Chests it down. Whelan does pick it up, though. Hannington space on the far side. He receives it now. There's targets for him to aim for if he can get the ball forward. Booty shows for him. Plays it inside. It's going to come back to Hannon. He's got space now to drive. Crosses the ball in and wins a corner. And Gateshead trying to exploit that left-hand side here in the second half as Ben Warman comes back from going down the tunnel. Quick toilet stop. And he goes to sit back down on the bench. But it's a corner. Gateshead on the far side. Looks like Whelan is a man. That's going to take it. It was dagging and player down there. I wasn't uh, watching that. He's clutching his head. I think it's Ling, actually. He's all right, though. And now Francis on the far side. Are oh, they going to take it short? They have done. Francis has the ball. Gives it to Whelan. Whelan has space. Oh, he plays it across. Gets it through to Booty. Booty on the edge. Jerry gets it to Francis. There's appeals for offside, and the ball goes out for yet another court. Oh, no, it doesn't matter for a goal kick. Well, not the best of corners, but here to try and different things, to try and open up different avenues. Well, Dagenham are down to 10 men. Uh, not Dagenham, sorry. <laughs> Dagenham fans are hot attack there. All the shot are down to 10 men. They're currently winning 3-1 at home to Ebbsfleet. Does that game have a sting in the tail for the home side? Nice turn by Francis. Adam was shouting for the ball, but he gets the ball moving forward to Booty. Booty picks out Hannon on the left-hand side. Well, the gate said forward line, they keep dropping to get involved and they need some better service into the box. They're doing a lot of work today, but Adam's on in acres here on this side and I think Magni was shouting for the ball to come over there as that Denanga drops deep, gets it to Adam. Adam plays it back to Job. And, whoop, oh, is that foul there? It's a throw-in to Gated. Throw-in or a foul, I couldn't see exactly what happened there. It's a throw-in, just out of my view in front of the dugout there. The Heat Army up there on the close lane, the back of the team, and we are stand trying to urge their team forward. And fine voice today, but the ball goes up to Denanga. Didn't oh, and there's a slip there from a Dagenham player, and luckily one of his teammates was around to mop that one up. As the clearance wasn't the greatest, went straight to Hannant. We uh, Francis in the centre. Job gives it to Whelan, who's right in front of him, gets it back. Story plays it out to Job, and Job got space to run into and move forward with the ball. Lays it off here. The ball's going to continue out to the left hand side with Booty now. Hannant. Booty receives the ball. It's going to play it inside centre to Francis. Back to Booty. Halfway inside the Dagenham half. There's the ball now with Richardson. Plays it through, look for the run of Whelan and just 
out it goes for a goal kick. It was the right idea as Carl Magne barks instructions from the touchline. Gets its coach. And we are 62 minutes into the second half. Clearance there. My headphones have just come out. I'm back. I can hear myself. Montgomery receives the ball from the clearance through and rolls it out to Job. Whelan to Story now across to Richardson. It's been a good tactical affair. Both sides trying things out, trying to break each other down. Certainly not a dull game, but the ball through there for Whelan. Hare was just got in front. Whelan's going to chase it down and get there. Lays it off the one on the far side. Hannant, booty. He's got a man coming on. Puts the cross in. Oh, Denango is there now. It falls to Hannant. Can he get the shot away? Oh, and he screwed it well wide. Oh. It was actually Whelan on the far side that did some great work to get the ball after trying to chase it down. But unfortunately... The chances that Gator have had have only been half chances. We need to make the goalkeeper work a little bit more. Another good kick from the Dagenham keeper. And that goes all the way out, coming off a Gated head. Throw in on the far side into the Gated half. Ling is going to take an yet another one of these magnificent long throws. Well, he didn't there, actually. <laughs> he caught me out. Caught me out. Hare plays it across the page. Left-hand side looks to look for a runner in the centre. Ball won off Phipps and felt of Pereira. Pereira goes to shot edge of the area. And uh, it's going to fall back to Dagenham. I'll say Pereira. There's a ball off. In comes a ball from Hessen Tyler. It's deep. It's very deep. And it goes out for a goal kick. Now, taken short to Story. At the moment, Gated just wanting to keep this ball moving. Played across the back. Dagenham trying to close down the angles there. There's Denanga, holds the ball up. He's been beaten, took it off him too easy in midfield though. Being swing to play on and a shot from Hare. And I think Denanga might get a, well, ball has not play. He hasn't stopped it, but Denanga just getting the word off the referee there. He did slightly hold the player after he was dispossessed. The ball over the top though. And now on the far side, Driving forward of the ball, Kane Adam lays it off. Denang oh, Dijon Brown was there, just took off his foot. He was about to unleash his left foot. Or right foot, even. Oh. Well, Adam and Hannon have changed sides here. Did not so earlier on, but I thought it was just off the off the break, but it does look more tactical now as Hannon receives this ball on the right hand side. Dijon Brown wants it at the back post, and it comes as oh, Brown was coming in. Just a little bit above his head. And we have 25 minutes remaining here. A local goal, uh, a local game is Darlington 2, Blythe 0. That's up with Blythe. And that result will see uh, Blythe and Darlington level on points. And that relegation battle is massively hotting up in the National League North. But at the moment, cleared by Dagenham. Story wins the header. It's been kept in by Booty. Richardson heads it clear. Picked up by Dagenham, though. Dagenham play the ball across, and they're going to do it. Again. Oh, nearly did it again, but gets managed to close it down. And you have to play it all the way back to the Ling there. Gets the ball back. Launch King launches it over the top, and uh, it's not going to be kept in. Or was it? It was kept in, actually. Did very well there. Deceptive from my angle. Gates said, boot the ball clear through. Francis and 10 man uh, all the shot have extended their lead to 4-1 there's Job 
nods it down straight to Hill, and that's not good. As he back heels the ball now to Page. Page puts it in there. Story nods it down, and it's going to fall again to a Dagenham player. Edge of the box. Pereira tries to trick his way past. Still going. He's still got the ball, Pereira. I don't know how. And now the shot off. And what a block from Louis Story. And it's still not cleared yet. As Gates have brought bodies in the way. And the header there. And well, it's going to go out for a corner. And Gates had rode their look a little bit there as York have pulled one back away to Altrincham. It's 3 1 there. But at this moment in time, Gates had just riding their look a little bit in defence. Well, no one's in any hurry to go over there. Now they are, as Pereira goes over to receive the ball. Raises his hand. I don't know what tactic it is, but he's trying to tell his teammates something. The delivery is coming in. The referee wants a word with somebody, does he? Yes, he wants a word with Lange King and with Mamadou Job. A bit of pushing and pulling there in the penalty area. Well, now we're going to be underway as we await this one to come in. It's a tight one towards near post and oh, put wide. And they're certainly not out of this game at all by any stretch of the imagination. Well, taken short to Montgomery. Get to get the ball moving with Richardson on the far side. Francis lays the ball off to Booty. Booty looks to find Adam, and his ball was awful pass inside. And Gates had just need to switch on here and. They win the ball back, but they don't. They lost it there, and Hill puts it over. He's wiped out. Now comes the cross shot, and oh, it went wide, and it's going to be pulled back for a... He's going to give the corner of the free kick. He's given the corner, but uh, Gates said just absolutely a disarray there. They had to scramble. It all started from the poor pass inside from Kane Adam. Well, corner on this near side. In it comes. It's very deep. Story can nod it clear. And he's going to get on to the end of his own ball here and launch it up the pitch once he gets it under control. He has. Now comes the long ball up towards Dinanga. It bounces through. And Gates is going to pick it up through Whelan. Oh, and he's given a free kick. I don't know what for. I didn't see anything. And that's not rose tinted glasses. Do not know what that was for. Ben Warman is stripped and ready to go Dagenham building on the right hand side as Pereira has the ball seen a bit of trickery from him in here in this second half as he's played out to Ling to Lai Ling's in the centre I couldn't see who that was on the far side but Gator do disrupt but they kind of get possession of the ball and Dagenham just in the ascendancy here well, we're going to see Evans come on with Wern. It's going to be a double switch and Denanga battling on the far side there, trying to do something. And the ball has been cleared out of play and it is a throw on the far side. We'll tell you who Warman and Evans is coming on. Evans is coming on for Denanga. So Denanga makes way. Brown looks like he's stopping on at the moment. Denanga gets a warm round of applause. Kieran Evans, the Welsh Messi, about to come on. And Warman will be replacing, when we see, Booty. Regan Booty makes way and he'll leave the pitch on the far side so Warman can enter the play now. And Gated. I've went to a more familiar uh, shape with the one man up front and more in midfield. So will that be able to break down the Dagenham and Redbridge defence? 
Marks Time will Andrew, tell. Number nine and number three, Raymond Booty, being replaced respectively by number 12, Kieran Evans, and number 11, Ben Roman. Oh, throw in Tittle for said Ling pings the ball up, headed clear by Gated Whelan, tries to win the ball, but now Adam plays it inside. Evans gets his first touch of the ball, driving forward of it in midfield. He's got Hannon Busnaga on this right hand side, gets it over to him. Hannon cuts right inside with the ball now lays it back to Whelan Whelan oh was he fouled there There's appeals for a ref uh, penalty would have been a soft one if given but the ball wasn't kept in by Dagenham and they have a throw halfway inside the Dagenham half here long throw over to Richardson Job Job plays it across to Story now Regan Booty gets a round of applause from the Tainan Wheel stand. He makes his way around the running track as Warman. No, sorry, Warman. Whelan gives it to Evans. Back to Francis. Francis puts it out to Hannant here on the right-hand side. Hannant plays it inside to Evans. Evans with a cheeky shot there. And uh, goalkeeper never really tested. Just scooped that into his arms as it come towards him. And we have 18... 17 and a half minutes remaining here in the first half. Big thank you to everyone that's joined us so far this evening, whether you're on National League TV or just on the audio stream. Always appreciative of the uh, people joining us. So normally we do have Mark Crowers with us, so apologies that it's just my voice. 50 pound voucher from the 5050. Ball into the centre to Francis. He's got space to run into. Hannington, acres of space on this right-hand side. The ball's been seen. The ball, though, just a foot got on it from Dagenham. And this is dangerous. They've got themselves forward as Phipps brings it down, lays it off inside to Hill. Hill just himself pulls it back to Ferreira. Great save from Montgomery. Down to his right-hand side. Scoops it back. And I don't know if he's hurt himself there because he really did get a... Like, when he got the ball... He landed on his like full stretch. And like the big yoga style really he was balanced on the ball when he stopped it. Yeah, I think he's uh just needs a little drink of water there. Clever stuff from Montgomery. Just slowing it down. Well, nonetheless, it was a great stop from Gated's goalkeeper this evening. And now Gated look to try and build again. Evans, there's a back to Francis. Evans plays it forward. Oh, and, well, if I hook up by Crook, he stopped the ball going through there. Did the fire force in? It's a pick up the ball as it goes forward. And the touch from Hannon wasn't the greatest, but a fire force and showing some great footwork there just to dance past and lay it off. Ball forward. Mamadou Job wins the header, falls the story. Story dinks it to Francis. Now Hannon's right hand side. Dijon Brown called for the ball. The ball's coming over towards him. Defender does well, but only finds as far as a Gated player and a little bit of a hot potato there. Gated could have done better. Job pounces though and drives forward off the ball. Whelan tries to poke it through. It, oh, it's going to fall to Dijon Brown and hook clear. It's just went a little bit messy at times from both sides. And you just feel that it's going to be a mistake as Mamadou Job did catch Hill as he got past there, just clipped the shins. And it's going to be a yellow card for Mamadou Job here. Hill down still but he's going to get up it wasn't the hardest of uh tackles be enough to to sting though well this free kick is about five yards inside the dagenham half here near the center circle They've committed a few men forward here to ping this ball up as Hare goes straight down the centre looking for the run of Hill. Hill isn't going to get there and it is a goal kick to Gateshead. 
We've got 14 minutes remaining here. And Gateshead, do they have it in them to carve out a cast iron opportunity? And the same question for Dagenham, nil nil here. Story waiting for the runner, plays it through to Evans. Evans holds it up, gives it to Hannant. There's a runner and wheeling through the centre. The run wasn't spotted. And Gateshead just build from the back once again. Richardson puts it out to Adam on the far side. Got Whelan on the inside of him. Pereira there with him. Whelan. Oh, Warman now pulls the ball across. There's Digga Brown! There it is! He knows where the back of the net is. And the ball just went off his foot in there. Right place, right time. You can't teach it. But at the moment, Gates had one goal to the good. You've heard of the bear. We've also got the beast. Well, I'll make that six goals in four games if you class the goal against Solihull. That some people dispute was Denanga's, but at the moment, whatever it is, Dejon Brown got himself in the right place at the right time. And Dejon Brown making a name for him on Tyneside. Dagenham going to kick us back off here. And we're back underway as Hare is going to ping this ball out towards the left-hand side. Mamadou Job wins the header, but it goes out for a throw. Two. Dagenham as Page has the ball. We haven't seen as many long throws from Ling in the second half, but Gates are trying to close down Warman. Does really well. There's Whelan to disrupt and but couldn't just clear the ball. Player goes down on the edge of the box. Hasn't been cleared yet. Page, left-hand side. Tries to play the ball in. It's a dangerous one, but there's Kane Adam to clear the ball through. Dijon Brown couldn't get to it, but now we can. Gated on the attack. He's got Evans in front of him, but the ball goes across to Brown. Brown chests it down. He's going to try and drive into the box. Good stuff from Longe King. And, well, Denanga brought down here, and uh, a free kick's been given the other way. And, uh, well, Gated uh, Bench cannot believe it. In real time, it did look as though um, Dijon Brown was fouled. Uh, I'll always stand corrected, of course. But the game, that goal has definitely given a little bit more life here, especially from Gateshead's point of view. And now, Job has time just to decide where he's going to put it. And then he tricked himself there, plays it all the way back to Montgomery in the Gateshead goal and we've got 10 minutes of normal time remaining here at Gateshead International Stadium Gateshead lead by a goal to nil Dejon Brown the beast on loan from Derby County a ball come through for Whelan there a little bit too much on it all the way through to the captain Justin in the goal of Dagenham kicks it from the edge of the area yet again another kick his kicking has been impeccable this evening as Elliot Justin and they kind of play a ball across here Dagenham didn't sorry now it goes back to Hare in defence Page he's got Hill in front of him on this left hand side comes up against Hannant what can Hill come up with takes it down Hannant just gets his body in front and was fouled great play from the wily Hannant and there is another goal in the National League. Kidderminster won, AFC Files won in that battle down the bottom. Kidderminster still fighting for their lives to stay in the National League. Well, Carl Magnier coaching from the technical area. Technical area. It's a free kick yet to be taken by Gateshead. Montgomery takes it all the way up towards Brown. Brown wins the header and he chases onto his own ball. And well, the ball goes out for a gated throw. Great work from the youngster. 
He's shown how it's done on and off the ball. Gates out of this break. It's taking this wheel, uh, throw in, sorry. Whelan tries to get past Page. Page will clear it out for another throw to Gateshead. Well, Mamadou Job comes over to take this throw. Gates have committing men forward. Stories up there to try and win the header. Richardson stays back to, uh, to Mark Phipps. But in comes the long throw. In it goes. Up in the air. Headed up. It's across the edge of the box. It's been nearly cleared by Dagenham. And Kane Adam can just poke it to Francis. And get to try and build once more. Lovely ball from Warman to, Fran uh, to Adam on the far side. Adam turns. Still with the ball. Holding off players. Lays it back to Richardson. Richardson now can see them. Hannant in space here. Right hand side. Algernon 5, York City 1. Then it goes from bad to worse. But at the moment, the only score we are bothered about here is Gated 1, Dagenham 0. Evans lays it back to Story. Story on the halfway line gives it to Francis back to Story. It said, calmly pass it back to Mamadou Job and then turn across to. Richardson, who can carry the ball forward, lays it off to Adam on the far side, back to Richardson. Francis in the centre circle receives the ball. Whelan manages to get the ball through to Story, and now gets it on the attack. Evans running on the edge of the box, holds it up, turns round, still going with the ball, tries to go for a shot himself, pulls it through, and uh, Page has to play this one to clear it. Hill with a little flick. And Gator try to disrupt as Phipps tries to turn with the ball, plays it over the top. Nobody making the run, and Gator can calmly build from the back once more as Montgomery passes it out to Richardson. Well, there was a spell earlier on where Gator just were a little bit raggedy with some passes in midfield, as were the opposition. Game is Calmed down somewhat since the goal. Ball across to Hannon to... Uh, sorry, Adam who brings it down. Confuse me because I'll switch sides. But Adam's still driving with the ball. Whelan. That's going to come through to Hannon. Story. Story's looking for a runner. Pings it out. Oh, well. Thought he was going to pass it to Hannon. But it goes straight out of play for a throw in to the visitors. South end of double their lead at home to Dorking. It's 2 0 there now. And uh, well, ball over the top, and it's going to bounce all the way through to Montgomery. Uh, so, yeah, and did I mention before, Solihull Moors won, Bournemouth 0 as well was a score earlier. Uh, that happened in the National League. And at the moment, Gated looking to. Build on this lead as a ball up towards Whelan. Bounced and Page is going to have to try and turn his man. Oh, and he runs the ball out to get it through. And that looks like tired legs from Page. He tripped as he went down. Hannant and Page have a little, little conversation there. Still feels aggrieved. He feels he was fouled. I don't know. Well, Hannant and Page have a hand slap there. There must have been something in it. A little bit of respect between two players, but Dagenham going to make a double substitution here. It is going to be Cardwell coming on for Apaya Forsen. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll uh, rephrase that. It's Daniel Nakurma that comes on for that, uh, for uh, that player, and it looks like it is going to be Harry Phipps is going to be replaced by Cardwell. So. Four, four and a half minutes remain here and they are going for it and Solihull Moors have doubled their lead as well at home to Boreham Wood so all the teams involved are in the playoffs are winning at the moment the ones that are playing of course there is some games that have fell to postponement but Story puts the ball up to Brown brings the ball down really well lays it out to Whelan can he pull it across he can oh Nodded down by Warman and 
<laughs> there was no one there to collect it apart from the goalkeeper. And now Justin is going to take another one of his long kicks. And yet again, like an arrow finds Phipps, but he loses out in the air. Well, he didn't. He won the ball, but he couldn't get out of the teammate. Now Hannans can bring it forward on this right-hand side. Has to turn, though. It's closed down by Caldwell. Francis, quick feet to get it back to Story. Evans to Hannant. Oh, and a poor ball from Hannant, but Story saves the day, and he's even got us on the break. And he, oh, well, I say that it was a poor ball, but Gates had win the ball back. They've just got quicker, fresher legs at the moment, but Adam on the far side gets the ball to Warman. Warman plays the ball into the centre. It's going to come off the defender. He manages to clear it. Ling on the far side. Hasn't went out as Gates had nodded forward through Job. It's been kept in. Great stuff. Great bit of skill there from Adam. And now he's got the ball. He's got space to run into. Down to the dead ball. They need to pick out the target. Puts across the digit. And it's been put behind for a corner. And Gates said looking comfortable at the moment. Two cars will need moving. It's a Skoda. Now in 20 ALO. And a Nissan Jeep Chuck, which is TN03 AWN. They're blocking access for the team coach. Well, there so you go. Skoda, so, um, if you are listening in, you've parked your car out there. Make sure it isn't yours. The LN team coach is blocked in. ALO. And DN03 makes a change from the opposition parking their coach on the pitch trying to park the bus as Francis puts this one in being headed clear by Lange King Adam tries to win it it's foul free kick on the edge of the area personally didn't see that was a free kick but we'll take it Altrinum 6 York City 1 and the Minster men are not having a great night this evening. Okay, and Adam just uh, sorting out his boot. I don't know if it'll come off there. But uh, Francis has put the ball down. Of course, when Greg Ollie comes back, it adds in more competition in midfield of course club captain greg ollie the longest serving player we're into the 89th minute well hazard i guess the referee has stopped his watch here there is a goal locally by spartans have scored against darlington it's 2-1 and rochdale have, have uh, went in the lead against walking they're winning 2-1 at this moment in time so francis is setting himself up here evans is there as well Francis steps up, puts it over the bar. Oh, into the side net. And he got the, the whip on it, just not enough. And it dipped beautifully. But the side net was the only place Thank it hit. Thank you, Gateshead, man of the match. Sponsored by Dawson Sanderson. Once again, a very close call of Gateshead. Tonight, it goes to number four, Callum Whelan. Callum Whelan, the non-league Modric, has got man of the match here and there's going to be a yellow card for descent here to i think it's ling and uh oh no it isn't it's phipps sorry and uh well frustrating evening for phipps didn't get the greatest of service but it's still not over yet it's not uh not over but we've got 10 seconds of normal time remaining here and if you join us here it's gear said one down redbridge nil Total of 786 here tonight. 786 in attendance. 34 and 34 way supporters who are getting a fantastic round of applause from the Tain and Weir stand as the ball has played up towards Hannant. It's been headed clear. And now Dagenham are going to try and give it one last roll of the dice, but they've played it off the back of their own man. And there was the man of the match, Whelan, to intercept. Now it's on the far side. Kane Adam, he's got space. Can he go for a cross or does he lay it off? Lays it off to Evans, edge of the area. Evans keeps the ball, nothing silly, just lays it off to teammate and the ball goes out for a gated throw on the far side. We haven't had how many minutes, but as I say that, the fourth official has grabbed the minutes board and we'll find out any second, but we're a good nearly a minute in as a ball here on the far side. Ball didn't get through. And Gateshead managed just to get it clear. Oh, lovely footwork from Whelan. And he was hacked down. 
Well, Whelan, lovely bit of footwork, and uh, he's won himself free kick inside the centre circle, and a yellow card has been given to Reese. But uh, I'll say that was a lovely bit of uh, skill from the man of the match. Well, we're a minute and a half into the time added on here. Two and a half minutes remain. As Story pumps this one up towards Kane Adam on the far side. Wins the header, but didn't direct it towards a teammate. Hessen Taylor passed it back and Lange Kane can launch it up. But there was Kent Richardson to put it out on the far side. And Gate said now... We'll have to stay in full concentration here as Dagenham come forward in the latter stages here of the added on time. Two minutes gone and Ling drives the ball for yet another long throw. We know what this weapon is. Can they use it to full effect? In it comes into the box. It's a good one. Headed clear though by Gated and Kane Adam can keep it in and then launch the ball clear. But it's only as far as the goal. Oh, it doesn't it did, actually it went out. It's a lie. Looked like it was going up towards the goalkeeper. It's another throw in a very similar position for Dan Redbridge. Ling is going to absolutely launch this one in as he does. It's a high one, headed clear by Gated. Evans just pokes it into a player. And it didn't get cleared completely yet. And now on the far side, the cross comes in. And Dagenham trying to get men forward. They need to clear this ball as the latch is shot off. Now headed clear on the far side. Who clear, but only as far as Hill. And Gated need to really clear the lines a bit better. As the ball out to the far side, can it be kept in by Pereira? It has, but Warman just there to pounce and clear the ball out and get can get their shape and push higher up the pitch. Where I've got a minute left here. As the ball put it back into the box, headed across, hasn't been dealt with, and a shot off past the post. And a let off for Gateshead. And, well, Robbie Tinkler is going to be a late substitute here. He's going to make a little cameo as he's going to come on. Another one of Gated's long serving players in his third spell, actually. I think he's on loan, then he signed permanently and then came back again. Dislocated shoulder earlier in the season. McCain Adam is going to make way and he's going to trot off on the far side of the pitch as Robbie Tinkler enters from here. And um, we have about 15 seconds remaining here at the end of the game. Robbie and there was a, a goal being wiped out at walking. They had they pulled themselves level, but it's a correction on my screen. Montgomery with the long kick. Lange King wins the header. Francis nods it up in the middle, wins it again, though. Ball launched forward by Hessen Taylor. There was Joe, but it only falls as far as a Dagenham player. Now they've got one last roll of the dice as Pereira on the edge of the area puts it across, great interception and a free kick to Gateshead and uh, a little bit of afters there there's someone trying to work their way through here but now it's going to be a free kick to Gateshead and this will be one of the last kicks of the game you would imagine, we are nearly a full minute over the four minutes of course it's a minimum of four Montgomery kicks the ball up towards Brown and there is the full-time whistle and Gateshead with a hard-fought 1-0 win here at Gateshead Stadium against Dagenham and Redbridge. They worked hard, they kept plugging away. There was one or two moments that made the Gateshead fans gasp but the hard work paid off and Gateshead keep themselves in the playoff picture tonight with this three points. And just looking at the live league table, it does look as though Gateshead will finish um, uh, in sixth place they've moved up a spot tonight and that is great stuff for Rob Elliott's men but it's Dejon Brown amongst the headlines again and amongst the goals the beast knows what he's doing in front of goal and he just needed that cast iron chance and when he did it went in the back of the net uh, a massive thank you to everyone that has joined us here this evening on the Heat Army podcast and on National League TV Gated roll on with another three points. They travelled to Ebbsfleet at the weekend 
Can they continue winning ways? You'll find out then. Join us on the Heat Army podcast next week. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell. You'll find out when we go live. And I tell you what, it's getting very exciting at the back end of the National League season and in the FA Trophy for the Time Siders. As Whelan leaves the pitch, applauding the ground. We give a man of the match a few, uh, performance and he deserves every bit of plaudits he gets. But the rest of the team are coming off. It's a clean sheet. It's three points. As Dagenham go over to say thank you to their travelling fans. They said, okay, they did their team proud here today? But Kate okay, said, smiling faces as they leave the pitch here. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. And we are off uh, now. And we'll see you next time.